Hey guys, Josh here. Today I want to talk about percentages, RPEs, how I use both of them, how I kind of program myself, when to pick RPE, when to choose percentage, everything like that. Some positives and negatives with both of them. Uh, and just basically give an insight as to how I write a program. Okay, so first off, there's something I like to use for all of my athletes, which is called a benchmark set. Uh, this is basically going to be a checkpoint each week of how much you've progressed since last week. Most of the time it's given as an RPE, uh, and it could be for example a squat triples, that's three reps, uh, an RPE of eight. We'll do that week one, and then week two we'll do it again at the same RPE, and hopefully the weights would have gone up a little bit, so that'll see the improvement. Uh, so that's basically, it sets the tone for the rest of the session. So once you know what you've done that benchmark, it gives you an idea, and it kind of opens up a lot of doors with percentages as well uh, of what loads we're going to use for either back offs different exercises variations things like that uh, so it's a great way to kind of separate the session in itself from the week of training okay so the example we have here is a squat one set of two and rp of eight that is going to be a benchmark each wednesday for squats it doesn't have to be the direct competition movement it could be your front squat belt squat anything but it's just going to be that checkpoint each week related to squats uh, of what progress is being made. So as I mentioned earlier, most benchmarks are going to be given at a RPE value. So this one, the squat double is RPE of eight. Uh, but what you'll notice is in the back downs, it is four sets of support at 75% of the estimated one at max that we are going to get from that benchmark squat. Now, in this kind of structure of a top set and then back downs where it's the same exercise this comes in super super handy because we get to utilize both rp and percentage together so we know from tons of research and plenty of studies that between 70 and 85 percent of your one rep max is kind of the optimal range for building strength so if we take 75 percent for four reps of whatever my estimated one rep max comes to be then that's going to be a lot more consistent on that day than basing it off what my blanket one at maxes that I probably won't be able to hit on that day. Now this is a method I really like to use just to kind of place that idea of like the daily potential you know you're not gonna be able to come in and match your actual one at max on any of the movements any day of the week you know it's it's pretty rare that you'll see that so when we use a benchmark set at an RPE that estimated one at max is gonna give us a rough idea or at least you know around what you're capable of, of that day on that day sorry so when we use the percentage of that that number that estimate one at max is basically acting as our daily one at max um, so we can perform to that at exactly the right point we want to be by using percentages and rps together now as with everything regarding rpe and training there is a pretty big margin for error uh, you know if the lifter records the top set or this benchmark set wrong in terms of rp say they record it a bit too high they say it was a nine and a half when realistically they could have they could have got a bit more or even on the other end of the spectrum they say it was a six but it was actually really really hard uh, that is of course going to affect these back off sets um it could be a negative impact meaning these back offs are all harder than they should be could be a positive one could be quite easy they're moving really well for that day and the percentage is actually bang on um, there's definitely a margin error which is going to take me on to my next point which is kind of some positives and negatives about using RPE as well as percentage. So we're going to talk about percentages first, some kind of positives and negatives, uh, you know when to use them, when's the best time, when you should maybe consider using RPE instead and what's kind of the better choice depending on the lifter. First off the massive positive behind percentages is you know exactly what's going to be on the bar. It's based off your one at max so you can figure it out a week in advance or however many weeks in advance and you can know exactly in your head what you're going to have to hit, what plates you're going to have to put on the bar. It helps to visualize it, helps to mentally prepare that kind of attack I guess you could say going into a session. Uh, it's just a lot easier to wrap your head around it when you know exactly how many kilos are going to be on the bar. Then of course ties into if you're a newer lifter, you've not been training for very long, uh, your RPE knowledge isn't that great, having an exact number given to you is going to help so much because it's a lot less to worry about, you can just walk into the session, put the weight on the bar and put all your effort into executing it with good technique, everything that you're kind of looking for before worrying about what loads should be used and what RPE it was. It just makes things a lot easier for newer lifters. 
And conveniently, that ties into my last point, it is a lot more convenient than RPE, I would argue, at least. Not quite as in-depth, but a lot more convenient. As in, going back to the previous points, you know what weights on the bar, you don't have to worry about warming up exactly uh, the same amount of reps as you're going to do for your top set, trying to gauge the RPE. You can just go up to this percentage, put all your effort into that top set, and then do what needs to be done, basically. Now, the obvious downsides to all of these points that I've just mentioned is that percentage is typically quite cemented. And if you want it, max doesn't change all that often, um, maybe once, twice a year, once you get down the rabbit hole. But these numbers are going to be pretty locked in, which is a positive, like I mentioned. Uh, but if you're feeling particularly strong, particularly powerful, the weights are moving fast on any given day, being limited to a percentage might be quite frustrating. It's kind of closing all those doors that allow you to maximize on how you're feeling on that day. And so naturally, this is where RPE comes into play. First point, auto-regulated by the lifter. This means when you're giving an RPE to work towards, it's not a set number, it's up to you as an athlete to decide that on your top set. So as I mentioned with percentages, downside, the numbers are locked in. You can't change them. But if you come in on a day and you feel absolutely amazing and you're working towards an RPE, the good news is you can push that as far as you're capable as long as you're staying within the actual RPE that's given and not going over. Being able to maximize the loads in your training is a really valuable tool uh, and in my opinion makes training a lot more fun as well. But it definitely does need to be used correctly because if you end up going way over the RP and overshooting, that's going to kind of derail you and remove a lot of that progress that has been made if you were to just stick to that or even stick to a percentage. And as much freedom as RP gives, it definitely needs to be prescribed at the right time. You know, uh, if the athlete has a tendency to go off program or the undershoot or overshoot pretty regularly, you might want to reconsider when you use RPs, when you use percentages, what kind of mix you're using of the both of them as well. Uh, but it can't be argued, you know, RP gives a lot more freedom than percentage and the more trained you are, the more experience you have with it, the better you'll become at picking those loads and determining what you should be using for each set. Now, this last one is a pretty important one to me uh, from the perspective of an online or remote powerlifting coach. You know, it can be pretty difficult to be there when a lifter's training or even be there when they have a competition, you know. So building that skill of warming up properly, being able to pick which loads of the top sets when you're based off an RPE. Uh, and on a broader scale, you know, when they go to competition and they're having to pick their own loads or put their own attempts in, it's going to be a really invaluable skill uh, that they can rate each lift and each warm up and each attempt on a scale of RPE and then allow themselves to increase from that the proper amount, you know, instead of making a massive jump or not jumping enough. So that's just a couple of points on both RP and percentage. Um, but the question of which one's better, which one you should choose, I definitely don't think there's a definitive answer. I love to include both in my programming. Like I mentioned earlier, setting the percentages off of a benchmark set, allowing the lifter to maximize the potential on that day, building up skills of RP, auto-regulation, you know, basing the percentages off the numbers that they're getting for that day, that daily potential idea. Um, I think it's an awesome thing to include both. I don't think there's a particular problem if you strictly use one of them. I feel like you may be limiting yourself a little bit, but there's absolutely nothing to say that's completely wrong. I believe in both of them. I think it's a great way to structure any program to use both, and that's how I do it myself. If you want to learn more about how I program or get in touch with me or want to become part of Forge Powerlifting, my details are in the description below. You can check out my website, you can find me on Instagram, send me a message, uh, and I look forward to it. Thank you for watching.